Hello, and welcome to After the Epilogue, a book podcast. From our yearly reading wrap-ups to our opinions on popular books, we are centered around anything and everything book-related. So if you're a reader like us, make sure to stay tuned. We are your hosts. I'm Maddie. And I'm Maya. And today, we will be talking about audiobooks. Everybody loves a good audiobook. Yes. <laughs> According to Spotify, who just introduced audiobooks on their platform, 72% of adult Gen Z and millennials listen to audiobooks. Yeah, so about the Spotify, if you didn't know, if you have premium, almost every audiobook is free, which is crazy. Not almost every. A there's lot of a very audiobooks. large collection yeah. um, of free audiobooks. So, yeah. Yeah. So what do you think has struck the popularity with the newer generations in I, audiobooks? Yeah, with audiobooks. Yeah. Um, I think they're really convenient for travel. Yeah. Um, you can listen to them in the car, just have them playing in the background. They're perfect for road trips. Yes, definitely. Especially as the holidays are coming up. Uh-huh. And then I think with the increase of, like, mobile devices and always having that cell phone on you and then adding them to platforms like um, Spotify, Mm -hmm. um, it just makes it a lot more convenient than carrying around a physical book. Yeah, for sure. I know that I listen to audiobooks usually when I'm working on something else. So, like, when I want to multitask, I can't read a book and, I don't know, like, do a no- brain usage assignment for homework. You know, something you don't really have to think about. You can have a music or an audiobook playing in the back. Um, that way I feel more productive. Mm-hmm. So that's yeah. typically when I use an audiobook or listen mm-hmm. to an audiobook. Yeah. And you can, like, read a book and wash the dishes. Yeah. Uh-huh. Which is so many things. Mind-blowing. Literally. You couldn't do that a few years ago. Well, Decades ago. I mean, you could, but it'd be really inconvenient and you'd probably ruin that book. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how often do you listen to audiobooks? Like, and then what's the ideal time for you to listen to audiobooks? Um, I don't listen to a lot of audiobooks. So unless there's like something special that's drawing me to an audiobook, like a voice actor or I can't find this book anywhere else except for an audiobook, I'll typically read like one every three months, but sometimes I'll read series and it'll be back to back, back to back of audiobooks. Um, And typically I read them or listen to them when I'm walking, like walking home or doing the dishes or working on homework or before I go to bed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For me, like I'll listen to them when I get up in the morning. Mm -hmm. Um, Just kind of those times when I'm doing other stuff, but like brainless tasks. Yeah, exactly. Um, And then also, like, I've listened to them at the gym. I've listened to them doing, like, brainless homework, like you said. Yeah. Um, Yeah, just a way to get information in my head. But I'm a big music listener. So it's it's a hard balance. What do you do? Yeah, yeah, do I want to listen to music or do I want to listen to an audiobook? So in the past, I usually choose music. But I've started to get more into the audiobook grind. Yeah, me too. Um, but, like, road trips used to be a big thing with me. Like, when I'd go on long softball drives, mm-hmm. we'd put on Trevor Noah. Well, it also helps because you don't get motion sickness from reading. Oh, I didn't know. You can oh, yeah, yeah. listen to mm-hmm. um, the audio instead of getting a headache from trying to read in the car and it's shaking all around you. Yeah. Also, I've never thought of it, but it's more accessible. Do you think there will ever be a point in time when books are on the low and audiobooks are i don't think so because there's always those people who are like i can't listen to audiobook i have to see the words and i'm one of those people because while i'll listen to audiobooks typically it's not a book i get really into Mm -hmm. so like if i want to get super into a book and i know i'm going to like a book i'm going to be listening or i'm going to be reading the book not listening to the Mm -hmm. audiobook and i might reread it with the audiobook but Mm -hmm. it's not going to be the sole form I listen, I Mm -hmm. consume it in. Mm -hmm. For me, it's that, um, like, when I'm listening to something, I feel I can be doing something else. Yeah. And so I'm not fully immersing myself in the book. And so a lot of times I'll split my attention and miss parts or Mm -hmm. not be fully invested when I feel I should be. Because I can't just, like, sit there and listen. Like, sit there and consume that is odd to me yeah um so I have to be doing something else which is kind of why I get less into Mm -hmm. it because I feel like 
I have to be doing something else unless I'm going to bed. And in that point, I really enjoy it, except I fall asleep and then I'll wake up and the book will be over. And that's why I need to put my sleep timer on, but I never do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what books make the best audiobooks? I like memoirs. I feel like a lot, it's a very high, um, probably the highest consumption, I would say. I don't know the statistics, but people buy a lot of uh, audiobooks in memoirs, like, oh my God, Spare. That was very popular. The audiobook for that was super popular. Um, and I also like listening to <laughs> yeah. realistic fiction or like books I wouldn't usually get into because if I'm going to read a fantasy novel, I'm going to be in it. Mm. But like a realistic fiction, it's not something you have to think very hard about. And it's also something I'm not super into. Mm-hmm. So that's another mm-hmm. thing I like to read. Yeah. Um, for me, it's those memoirs. Like, I I can't get, in my opinion, I don't get much out of an audiobook yeah. if it's, like, the same thing as a normal book. But if it's a memoir, if it's read, if it's read by the author, mm-hmm. there's that sort of personal aspect to it. And it adds something. Yeah. It adds a certain um, quality to it. Born a Crime by Trevor Noah. I had the physical book. I read the physical book, mm-hmm. but I also listened to him read it. Yeah. And, like, he's he's clearly a comedian. Like, that's his job. Mm-hmm. And it was just so well done to hear him tell these stories. Yeah. Um, I think voice actors are very important. Oh, yeah. So important. Like, <laughs> the Dan and Phil memoir I'm listening to right now, they're reading out their own book and they keep adding extra little bits, which is something I'm not going to get if I read the regular book. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. I feel like they're talking to me, like they're having a conversation in front of me and it feels more like a podcast than Mm -hmm. it does a book, which I enjoy. I am reading Dan, Dan Howell's book um, (laughs) right now and it's about mental health. And so every once in a while it'll have like exercises in it Mm -hmm. and it'll give you an opportunity with the way it's set up. Um, to take time and do them for yourself Mm -hmm. um, while you're listening, while you're reading. Um, 1984, I read as an audiobook or tried to read as an audiobook. And, you know, some parts just aren't (laughs) right for certain situations. Um, If you are in stats class, the context of the book might throw you off. Mm. Um, But one cool thing 1984 did do is if it was like, the lady on the telly was <laughs> running through exercises or whatever. Yeah. Um, it would, like, sound like there was a woman on the television saying these things. It's, like, more immersive. It's an immersive experience. Yeah. It's like listening to a film um, or Which a podcast. Really cool. yeah. It was really cool. I think there's so many ways audiobooks can be done well. Uh-huh. Um, and so it's a cool experience. But, like, Nick and Charlie I did. Mm-hmm. Um, Me too. And you also read it audiobook wise. Is it read or listen to? It's definitely listen to. But, but I'm gonna keep saying I'm gonna read. say read. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um I listened to it as an audiobook. And it was good. Like the voice actors were good. Yeah. I liked it. It added that emotion during like the fight. Oh yeah. At the end. Um but it wasn't anything special. It didn't have those like extra audio elements that like 1984 did when I listened to it. Or that personal touch of Trevor Noah reading it. Yeah. Um, so I think I think there's a fine line. I think overall, audiobooks are good if they're done right. If the mm-hmm. production value is put in, amazing. If it's going to have a monotone voice actor, no special, why not just read the regular book? Like, yeah. it'd be more entertaining for you, and you'll get more out of it, mm-hmm. in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That is all for this episode. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of After the Epilogue. Check out After the Epilogue on Instagram and Twitter. Mm-hmm. And then... Uh, the song yeah. of Maddie on TikTok. Yeah, and it'll all be around the screen. Yes, somewhere. it will. Um, and that'll show you updates behind the scenes. And then After the Epilogue is hosted and produced by Madeline Glenn and Maya Ortiz. Thank you. Thank you.